Hello, hello, welcome back to the channel. In this video, we will discuss the cause of crustal deformation. In the former video, I showed you the strange eccentricity of the former ice sheet on North America, Europe, and part of Russia. Why it is strange that this ice sheet did not cover Russia entirely because the vast landmass of Russia encourages the formation of an ice sheet similar as on North America. This animation shows how cold and melt of ice in winter and summertime centrically grows and melts around the geographic pole or the spin axis and how Greenland as a strange anomaly does not take part in this process of ice formation and melting. In this animation uh, you see uh, the movement from Pole 5 south of Greenland, how it moved to Pole 4. Pole 4 is on the southern tip of Greenland and how this Pole 5 encouraged the formation of an ice sheet on the northeastern part of America and how from this region grew an ice sheet and why this ice sheet did not make it all the way to Alaska and uh, the eastern part of Russia and that explains very simple why these regions were not covered with an ice sheet. Here you see the graphical representation of the Milankovitch cycles that is tilt or also called obligatory uh, precession of the spin axis and eccentricity and when all these three elements are combined together um, they form a so-called solar forcing at 65 degrees north and that is on the southern part of Greenland and this is that is this yellow line this yellow line is the fourth uh, graph from above and this yellow line is believed to be cause of ice formation and melting but there is not a single relation between solar forcing and the ice ages on the graph you see at the bottom the black line there is only a one-on-one -on -one relation between ice ages and eccentricity so that is the black line and the blue line and you see here the relation over the last 450,000 years between ice ages the red line and eccentricity the yellow line might be a little bit confusing that uh, I made eccentricity yellow and in the form graph it is blue but okay so you see here a clear relation between the ups and downs of eccentricity and ice ages and why mainstream science has never discovered the relation between the two is because eccentricity does not cause any energetic changes in how much solar energy the earth receives from the sun varying eccentricity has no influence on the amount of solar energy a little bit you're just talking about one percent variation in received solar energy there's no real relation between received energy and the waxing and waning of ice ages and that in fact confuses mainstream science because no one ever seriously looked into the gravitational elements of eccentricity and there is very very little research done to what variation in eccentricity does with a planet with a rotation speed uh, also called length of day so what does this eccentricity do with the planet? And this is very interesting. What we discovered, this is entirely own research. Here you see this animation 
the red is the sun and the green is the earth and this is not to scale of course but to make this clear eccentricity is made very extreme when eccentricity is high the earth makes a more elliptical orbit so it comes close to the sun and goes far away from the sun and this play of forces happens within a period of just one year so it goes very short and the forces these are enormous forces within one year that are pulling on our planet when eccentricity is high and here you see a graph of what eccentricity does with our planet today the orange line goes up and down and up and down and it's maybe somewhat confusing the modified Julian date is a weird scientific notation but um, it goes from January 1973 up to December 2016 and you see this orange line going up and down up and down within one year and what I discovered is that the cause of this variation is eccentricity basically when uh, eccentricity increases and the earth comes closer to the sun that is perihelion then the rotation increases a little bit and when the earth within one year is further away from the sun the rotation speed decreases and this is this variation you see in the graph there is a clear one-on-one -on -one relation between eccentricity and length of day I haven't found a single paper or scientific treaty on this topic no one has ever done research to this the reason why rotation speed increases when the earth is close to the sun and why rotation speed decreases when the earth is further away from the sun this is totally unclear no one knows it seems to be a very difficult mechanism at work here when you calculate the amount of energy that is at play here so there's about two milliseconds variation in rotation speed within one year this represents approximately 15 times the total amount of energy used by humanity today so this is a little bit for your perspective how much energy there is at play here it is enormous and when eccentricity increases this rotation speed varies much much more I suspect but I know, don't know this for sure that this goes quadratically you see this example of three different scales of eccentricity that is on the left no eccentricity completely circular orbit then the second from the left eccentricity is 0 0.0024 and on the right you see eccentricity is extreme and when eccentricity becomes more extreme the rotation speed varies also more extreme most of us who do not believe in flat earth know that the earth is a sphere and it is not a solid sphere it consists of a solid core surrounded with a liquid core then a solid layer and again a liquid layer and then the crust it is solid again so this is a very complex system of high density in the core and low density at the crust and when you realize that rotation speed varies with this complex set of solid liquid solid liquid and solid that has also different densities now imagine that this complex set of five different systems is forced to rotate at different speeds this has of course consequences consequences not only for the core but also for the crust and that can be compared to a gyroscope so the earth is rotating and it behaves like a gyroscope doesn't want to be changed in direction but when this set of different systems starts to rotate at different speeds this generates all sorts of 
forces and these forces have the most severe consequences for the lightest part and that is the crust so the crust starts to compensate these rotational changes and these compensations that is what the crustal deformations are these compensations these crustal deformations that is what science has called glaciation cycles or what we call ice ages but there are no real ice ages they are deformation cycles of the crust the easiest way to find these compensations is by tracking back the positions of the geographic poles by orientations of ancient structures and this is a great discovery so i want to thank you for watching to this video i will very soon upload a new one in the description below you can find the whole list of plant series about this topic about this very interesting topic and of course you can support our research on patreon so you can go to my patreon page and become a patron and find new content there i hope to see you the next time thank you bye bye